the eudicot leaf cross section is generally the one that you kind of see in textbooks. Um, we have, as in all of our tissue, we're going to start with our epidermis and the epidermal cells in the leaf are clear so that the sun can penetrate into this next layer which is where most of the photosynthesis occurs. So the middle area of my leaf is going to be called the mesophyll fill. And that will be bounded by a lower epidermis. In most eudicots, the leaves are parallel to the surface of the earth so that the sun um, hits as much area as possible. And because of that, there can be some specialization between the upper epidermis and the lower epidermis. And then that means that we'll have a layer of cells that typically the sun will hit first. And so this layer is the palisade mesophyll and then the layer underneath this typically is loosely packed and arranged so that there are large air spaces in between the cells and that is termed the spongy mesophyll, just like a sponge. Within the mesophyll, you might come across veins in cross section. or you might come across them in transverse section. And sometimes you can kind of see that secondary cell wall that's been stained in the xylem compared to the very thin primary cell walled phloem cells. But otherwise it's going to be filled with um, the mesophyll, the palisade, and the spongy. Um, sometimes this area has some larger bundle sheath cells that help to maintain the form of that vascular bundle. Sometimes there's some fibers in there, sometimes not. Depends on the species. But the, if it's present, that is known as the bundle sheath. We have a layer on top of wax and a layer on bottom of wax. That waxy layer makes a really nice barrier so that these aerial organs do not lose water and it provides pretty good resistance to pathogens. And it kind of just lays on top of that epidermis. The Alright, so the next thing that I wanted to talk about were some special epidermal cells. They are called the guard cells. 
and they're card the they are called the guard cells for their function, which is they guard little pores that are much usually much more numerous in the lower epidermis compared to the upper epidermis. The guard cells come in pairs and they work together. And um, this area between the two guard cells, that is a pore, and it is known as a stoma, stomata for plural, and it means mouth. So basically these are little mouths, little mouths into the leaf. And it permits the leaf to exchange things like oxygen with the atmosphere, um, carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. At the same time, however, that it is uptaking carbon dioxide, it is also losing water. And water is very precious plants are not able to go to the water fountain to grab some more. Um, and so when the soil is dry, when the atmosphere is very, very dry, these guard cells will close so that the pore is not open, so that the stomata close. One other item um, I want to talk about a couple of different cell types within the palisade. So these palisade cells, as I've already mentioned, um, their major function is for photosynthesis. And because of that, you'll see that they are green and they're chock full of the organelle chloroplast. And because of this, they have a specialized name um, that refers to these cells full of chloroplasts that are called chlorenchyma cells. Um, so we have a vascular bundle here and that vascular bundle is filled with phloem and xylem and there might also be fibers or other types of parenchyma cells there. Um, the bundle sheath cell types are normally cholenchyma, cholenchyma cells, so they have a thickened primary cell wall. And the spongy mesophyll can have chloroplast, but again that's not its major function, so it won't um, have that many.